Hey there Jays, it's your old pal McJuggernauts here. Today I was going to come out with some behind the scenes for me and Brian's Hollywood Hype series, but instead I needed to address something now that our mini series is over and uh, this is actually something that's very real. That being this whole situation with Korn, why he quit, um, I saw he did a couple of videos on this and to be honest, I didn't think that would ever be the case. Um, I thought we kind of had a mutual understanding that a personal friendship and business matter, we wouldn't involve third parties, the, the whole entire internet, you know, let's, let's get everybody involved, let's get as many people as possible, you know, let's call Jesse a dick and slander him to his audience so, so that I have people hating on me when, when people don't know the whole truth. So this was something I never wanted to happen, it's something I never wanted to do. Um, he could have just called me and we could have sorted this out like men but um, instead I have to do a video response to this because now I have to explain my side because there's two sides to every story and then there's the truth so hopefully once you hear my side you'll be able to determine what is the truth and you can kind of combine the two stories it's just it's just weird that this is happening now you know it's taken four months for him to come out and talk and and guys I swear to you this isn't a series this is very real uh, that's why I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing it, it's just it's it's unfortunate that it has to come to this you know I told everyone that he wanted to be a cop I wanted I wanted to um, it's a lot like a breakup I don't know if you ever seen you know two youtubers break up or a youtuber and their girlfriend or um, even a band breaking up two friends you always want to keep that personal but also if you're in the public spotlight people do need an answer and that's why I said Corn was becoming a cop um, so people would not, you know, kind of pester either one of us. It would just be the kind of unspoken thing. It's like, he's a cup, cup, that's it. Um, let's go our separate ways, but, uh, things are different. So I'm going to about to get into all of this. Uh, just, just some nerve call me a dick and you know, it, it sucks when, when your best friend says that about you and puts it in front of the whole audience. It just, it sucks. But the box is open now. You know, guess guess I'll have to break the silence. Hope you guys are ready, sit back. I'm not gonna split this into two parts. I don't see why that was necessary. Um, here we go. So Corn was my best friend for like 10 years. That That's true. Um, and you know, we met through Halo 2 and we developed a relationship online gaming. And uh, then we started to hang out in person. You know, went to the same high school. You know, we played uh, soccer together for uh, some years and um, I'd have him over here all the time. And he was one of those friends where I'd have him over like 10,000 times and I'd only ever been to his house maybe like 10 times, most of which was in the series. And I'm not even counting the times that he was over for the series when he'd come to my house. It was like, you always have to pull and pull. Um, but he, he was a good friend and he was very loyal. You know, you could always count on him to, um, to come over and hang out or do whatever, play some video games. It was a very chill relationship, you know, very, very innocent. So I got into YouTube, you know, I was doing videos and stuff, and then Corn would be in them and help out, and he, and he was always around with the friends group and, and helping out with videos and stuff. So, so that's kind of like the history. Um, then let's catch up to when sort of the Psycho Series began. So the Psycho Series started becoming like really successful, and you know, I was doing a lot of videos by myself. Corn, Corn would help here and there uh, while trying to get something in his criminal justice field after college and uh, it got to this point where, where Rigid Studios was, was so big that I could afford to hire a cameraman so Corn worked for me for maybe a, a month, an odd month here or there um, and, and then he ended up finding a job at a corrections facility which I, I was very happy for him but I still needed a cameraman um, so it got to this point where you know Eagles Landing happened, it was doing two videos a day, three videos a day, it got to be even larger than I, than I thought it would ever be so I was able to afford uh, paying a cameraman a little more. So I'd be hanging out with my friends and I had this idea to offer it up to my friend Zach. I, I offered it up to, to Corn, And Corn was working at the prison, you know, making a certain amount of money. And I thought, okay, if I offered him a contract to work for me for more money, maybe he would take it. Because I do need a cameraman. Corn was always around filming videos. So I thought, you know, I could trust this guy. Um, and and I, I really could have ended up being anyone. Like I offered it to other people as well. Uh, so it didn't necessarily have to be just Corn. It, it was anyone who wanted to take the job. So so Corn was pretty meh working at the prison. I mean, it's working at the prison. It's not glamorous, and you know, there's a lot of hours and a lot of. It's also very dangerous too. You know, you're working around inmates and stuff. And I think he said he was like watching movies. Like it was like really just like kind of drab. So um, I thought you know to work with me, it'd be a lot of fun holding the camera for your best friend. Uh, and guys, if you saw his video. The most important piece of the story that he's leaving out is how much he was paid. You know, you can't 
claim that you're being underpaid and that you need more money when you don't tell anyone what it is you're making because then it's hard to really trust that. Um, I offered him for one year contract, he was making three grand a month. Uh, so total $36,000 a year, which is a great, great gig, um, especially just for holding the camera for your best friend doing YouTube videos. Um, and it was more than he was making at the corrections office. So, you know, he had to consult with his parents, which, which I totally understood. And I told him, I was like, if you need me to talk to your parents too, that's fine. He came back to me. He said he was, he was a little, uh, afraid to make that kind of leap because, you know, criminal justice was his field in college and, and he was going to be, um, you know, in, in that field and hopefully moving up and he was using benefits. So the one thing he asked of me was, is, is there some way I could have some kind of job security? Um, because, you know, we don't know how this YouTube is going to pan out. And uh, I told him, I was like, look, I, I think I, I could guarantee you another year. So I included two years in the contract. Pretty much the first year he'd be getting paid three grand. And then the second year, it would be renegotiation. And depending on his performance and everything, I'd give him a raise. But I definitely guaranteed at least another 36 grand for a second year. So I gave him that security. He signed on. And that was in September of 2015, kind of right in the heat of the series. So you know the history. You know how much he was getting paid now. Now let's talk about what he actually had to do. You know, what did the contract state? Um, pretty much it was just he operated the camera. He held the camera for me, um, you know, every day. And, and, he, and he was aware of the schedule that we had. And um, he, I'd also, you know, wanted ideas if he ever had any because it's difficult to come up with, you know, original ideas every single day, especially two videos. So, you know, I was always open to come up with that. Uh, there was a part in there talking about menial tasks required so like if i needed him to like say move the tripod from here to there or to get some props together or you know make things it kind of almost like a production assistant which i don't know if you guys know but but for as film as far as film goes the amount he was getting paid to hold the camera is pretty far up there like i know actually some producers like full-on news producers that make maybe around 20 to 30 grand a year so the fact that you know he's holding a camera for a youtube series and he's not even trained to do so you know he graduated a criminal justice degree i could have very easily hired somebody who graduated from my college who was interested in film, but I wanted to go with my best friend who I'm trusted and he did seem pretty mad about the prison and I thought it could have been a lot of fun and, and, it, and it was for, for a good time. So how it would be is say a day we had two videos a day, he would, I'd shoot him a text and generally he knew around what time the day before, but say around like 2 p.m. So he got to sleep in, I like, I mean, that's crazy. Like we both got to sleep in and uh, you know, you don't get that at most jobs. So we get started around two. It, it wasn't very difficult. It, it, you're just coming over to your friend's house. You don't got to dress up, you know, just roll out of bed, head over. And then we talk about what we need to film. I'd direct and if we had to go somewhere, we'd go somewhere. Um, and then I'd direct and he'd, I'd tell him what shots to get. I'd call them money shots. I'd be like, look, you need to film this, this and this. So it's not even like he was coming up with what to film himself. Uh, he just had to carry out the tasks and, um, we, we'd film for maybe 30 minutes to an hour. A lot of it was me directing, um, kind of setting, because a lot of it was one take. And then it got to this point where we'd finish the first video, I'd take it, I'd edit it all, I'd upload it, and, and while it's uploading or while it's saving onto my computer, we'd go and shoot the second one, and then it's the same drill. So, you know, we maybe work like five, six hour days. Um, and it's not even like he, and in his video, he talks about how he never had a day off or he never had a break, he makes it sound like the most grueling shit ever. But honestly, yeah, it was day in, day out, um, but it was only like five, six hour days in which you know he, he was sitting down uh, just listening and the rest was holding the camera and it wasn't pretty much the videos that you see, that's the amount of time he was holding the camera. You know, some days we had uh, multiple takes on something, so not exactly, but, um, but yeah, he made it sound like he never had a day off, but um, I mean, anybody can just go back and check the series where I was going to see Juliet at least, at least once every two weeks, and that'd be at least two days off there. I would also do uh, hashtag triple M and Q and A videos, which I would always do by myself. Um, so there's you know hours off where I did everything myself. There was also uh, fan mail towards the beginning. I would do by myself because I was able to lift it. But as my uh, pain got worse, uh, he would help with the fan mail. But really, he just had to uh, kind of help move move uh, some of the boxes, which which isn't really that difficult. So he definitely had you know some free time, and once again the hours you know, five to six hours a day. Granted, you know, you had those weekends and, and I'll get into more stuff uh, later on in this video, but it was, um, he, had, he had free time. And especially say we get done at like eight or nine, you know, he's up till like two in the morning and you got five hours there. You got the like five hours in the morning before we even start. So five, six hours of work. If you do the math, say like five times seven or six times seven, 
that's anywhere from 35 to 42 hours a week. That's almost the equivalent of a full-time job. So it ends up evening out and the work, once again, it's, it's really not hard. And it's something that guys, I'm sure anybody would love to just fucking film videos with your best friend. It, it, it should have been a lot better than it felt for him, which, which is a shame. I, I think it has to do with who he is and who I am and, and it, it just not matching up. It just wasn't a good match. So one thing to make clear is that he, he was an employee of Rigid Studios. Um, you know, he was an independent contractor because we weren't uh, LLC at that time. Uh, we are now, but uh, you know he was an employee. He just was a camera operator. I I was everything. I was the director. I was the writer. I was the editor. I was the uh, I was technically the cinematographer because I would say what shots to do. And you know one thing he didn't do in his video was he didn't praise me at all. Like he he almost like thought of me as like uh, like some kind of asshole or or whatever. But like I, I would tell him when he he did a good job, and it was something that like. I, I did value, so you know to say to say these things, it it, it hurts, and, and I tried to be the bigger man and um, act like you know this stuff doesn't matter, but but it hurts. I, I never got much of, of a thank you for for this great opportunity, um, but I'll get into more stuff. Uh, sorry guys, I'm rambling. It is just a lot to cover because uh, I never wanted this to get out there. I just don't think it's it's appropriate, but but yeah, I I did everything I was the fuel to this whole operation and he just had to follow direction well and um, and we'd get the job done and, and this this was my baby and I, 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 I he, he said that in his video and I, I think he understood that that you know I was extremely passionate and a very driven person and something about corn is that he's just a very quiet um, unmotivated person and, and really the only reason I felt like he was doing this was for to get paid, which is a shame. You know, it should have been something really just like fun and passionate and creative, but he's just not that type of person. There's nothing wrong with that, um, but he was doing it for the money, and I think that's that's important to understand. He, you know, he said he was doing it as a friend, but I mean, if you're doing it as a friend, you, you wouldn't be getting paid for it. So when he says that, it's just like, dude, like, what? I don't... I don't know. So he starts in September, um, and, and really that month, it was great because what I told him was, I was like, look, man, uh, if you have any interest in doing videos, um, I can structure a whole marketing plan to get your channel up and running. I can set everything up for you, uh, make make sure it's super legit. You know, I, I pretty much drove him to create all these social media accounts. You know, I helped make them for him. I even came up with the storyline where I get kicked out and stay at his house so we can deploy his channel at the right specific time to get followers. And you know he blew up. He got like he's up to over 300,000 subs, a quarter of a million subs. And just while the series was going on, I think he racked up like maybe seven to eight million views collectively. So you know, in addition to his 36 grand salary, he also received quarter million subs, seven million, eight million views collectively, which equals to maybe somewhere around 3,000 on the low end to like seven or eight thousand dollars in addition to that salary. So you could bump that shit to 45k. Granted, he's putting the work into those videos but he had the following because of how we deployed it and because it was related to McJernan's channel. Similar, you guys know from the other channels that we've released as well. Not to mention he got followings across the board on Twitter and Instagram and then I even, you know, he, he was getting crazy amounts of Twitch followers which I would push people to those. I would be telling them, you know, giving shout outs, something that wasn't required by me but I was being nice. I wanted to, you know, do make this like really, really a cool partnership and uh, he, he, got Twitch, he got Twitch partnership. And he was able to make money off Twitch as well, which was incredible. You know, some people work fucking for years just to get that Twitch partnership. Or people work for years to get, you know, I worked for fucking eight years until I actually saw some sign. And, and, and he's getting all like that. And I can say, I think, I can think it's easy to take that for granted where he's getting a play button and shit. He's got a quarter million subs. So, you know, that kind of factors into it as well, I think. Not to mention he even got a couple fangirls because of it. And uh, I think he's dating one currently, which, hey, I mean, can't go wrong there. That's great. So you got his channel, everything, you know, we're, we're, we're getting towards the end of September, uh, you know, hanging out with Julia, he's getting days off, whatever. Construction series takes place. I'm feeling uh, pretty shitty. I, I was at like a really bad time for me pain-wise, which which he made it sound like he, he thought it was fake until he found out that I had surgery for it. It's like that was a real thing and it hurt that he thought I was making shit up to, to have him do things, making me sound like a manipulative fuck. Which I think it's easy for you guys to get lost in it as, as well as him, that maybe he started to confuse me for the character that I portrayed. Because how I'm talking to you right now, this is real Jesse. Um, 
and 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 I'm, I fight an uphill battle because my character was you know very belligerent and just it's just fucking ridiculous. I love him to death. I love my character, but like he he was a loose cannon. So you know maybe there's there's a draw there. So we're getting to the construction series. You know. Anytime I filmed the whole construction series, and uh, so he didn't even film that. He just did some little task labor-wise that I would tell him to do in the videos. Um, but really, what you see in the videos is not the truth. The truth of the matter is, Uncle Larry did fucking everything for that room. Like he pretty much built that whole thing himself. You know, Mark did a little bit of work and, and Corn did some work, but only as he was instructed to do so by me or Uncle Larry. And Uncle Larry pretty much fucking did 90% of that work. He built the whole fucking room, and that's Uncle Larry going to his day job and then coming to help me film. Granted, he's family, but but Corn's getting paid for it, and it's just like. Ugh. So when it comes time to film, it was like. Corn be on his phone like 24 7. There was one time where my dad even looked over his shoulder at one point. Dude is blatantly ignoring me giving direction. He and he's scrolling through apps. He's not even looking he's not he's not even looking at anything in particular. He's just scrolling through apps. And I was like, what the fuck? Just on his phone constantly. I'm giving direction and, and, and as a director, you know, you want your cameraman to understand hundred percent what the scene is, so they better know what to be zoomed in on, honing on, what to focus on. There's a lot of times I had to repeat myself or I'd be like, Did you get that? And he was looking at his phone, I was like, I don't think he necessarily got that. Like his heart wasn't in it. Once again, that's to the detriment. Uh, but I mean at least you, you you should be listening and respecting me when I'm talking. Uh, which which was a, a I was always pulling. It was very difficult, very difficult to work with. And and one thing too is like I was talking about my character. Uh, you guys don't know Corn as a person, and I'm not gonna say shit. You know, like oh he's this kind of person. But but once again, it's my perspective. And uh, if you guys want to know the real Corn, uh, just watch the videos on his channel. It, it's pretty. It's it's pretty indicative of who he is, and um, you know he, he's not a bad guy, and I'm I'm not a bad guy. It's just unfortunate circumstance that took place. But yeah, he is a very quiet person. It's difficult to communicate with him. Um, but you have to understand also the corn that you know from the Psycho series was a character. He was the audience. He was the Samwise to my Frodo. So you guys are going to love him automatically. I mean, in a given scenario, obviously he wouldn't. Probably he wouldn't at all, you know, fight Jeffrey off of me, you know, push him off and, and tackle for me. That's just not him. And and also like, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be doing the things he was doing. He he was he was a character in that series. So you guys don't know the real him. Just like you, like you, I think you guys know me by now because you've seen me enough times. And you can kind of see through any character I'm playing. But just so you know, guys, once again, a lot of shit to cover here. I'm, a, I'm a, all one though, all one baby. So we're in the construction series right now in October. Uncle Larry's doing fucking everything. There's this one night that um, Corn, Mark, and Uncle Larry were working, and my mom comes in, and it's just a check in how we're doing. And my mom just said something to Corn along the lines of, "Wow, like, you know, Mark's going a lot faster, Corn." And then Corn, dead serious, uh, gave her the middle finger, and my mom burst into tears and my mom left and me and Uncle Larry and Mark just looked at each other we were like what the fuck was that just flipped off this was like a month or two in flipped my mom off and I was like what the hell you know like a, the night later like my mom and dad were saying like look you're gonna have to fire him we don't want him coming back in, in our house my dad was very upset with that I was upset by that and I was like look ma you know He's become a character in this, and he just signed on, and I, I think it'd be wrong to fire him. And, and, and my mom was like, "Look, like, I, like you don't do that. You know, you don't flip, you don't, you don't flip somebody else's mom." And my mom's the sweetest woman alive, and, and it just it, there was like a lot of like fucking angst. It wasn't like a <laughs> even though you wouldn't do that to somebody else's mom, uh, it was like a pretty serious one, and it really hurt her. And um, I'm, I was like, look, I'll tell him, I, I, I need him to apologize. And I told Corin, I was like, dude, you got to say sorry to my mom because you, you shouldn't have done that. And he's like, okay. It seemed like it was like pulling. It was like hard to get him. And then he did it and, and everything was fine. But that was just like one of those things that was like, what the fuck? Um, so that happened. So there's just a, a, a random attitude at that point. So, so then, you know, November hits, I thought he did a great job. And you know, I, I do, I do have to, to give him credit. There was a, a, a few scenes they did really well on, and I told him that I was like, dude, I was like, two of the best videos you shot were, were Psycho Brothers Tom's glasses. Uh, I thought, you know, we pulled that off because I appreciate, you know, they acted in that and, and did a good job. And then um, when we did the divorce video, divorce video was good all around. It's one of my favorite videos. Um, 
And I thought he did a good job shooting that. And, and I was very happy about it. And I told him, I was like, dude, I was like, really nice job. Um, so, you know, I was very complimentary about that. And then uh, we get to December. December's fine. I gave him a Christmas bonus, you know, extra $500 just because. Um, and then uh, then 2016 hit, and, and things started to change a little bit in terms of attitude, and, and we'll get there. Hell, I mean, now that I think about it, he was even unhappy with the Christmas bonus I gave him. He was saying that it was not enough like that he was like well my dad you know gets this much for his christmas bonus or like some businesses get this much for it's like i didn't need to give you a christmas bonus at all like he starts having these ridiculous like and that was just like another sign it was like even just a christmas bonus just like money just handed to him it wasn't enough like he complained about that and i was like if you're gonna complain about that then what else are you gonna complain about? Like, I don't know about you, but if somebody just hands you $500 for Christmas, you're not like, oh, you know, I wish this was $2,000. Like, what? Or like, Jimmy down the street, you know, he got he got $1,000 for Christmas. I You only gave me 500, so fuck you then. You're harsh, you're a dick. No, like, what? I, ugh, God. If somebody gives you a bonus, $500, you accept that, you don't complain to it. If any boss, if I wasn't his friend, if he actually had like a 40-year-old 40, 40 man, a 50-year-old man who's been working for a corporation for years, and the man comes over and gives gives you a check for $500 for Christmas, you, you don't be like, sir, this is not enough. Uh, my other job, I got paid this much for a bonus. No, that's fucking disrespectful, that's rude, and that's why you get fired. It's like, what is, this isn't National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, you know? So New Year came and it was like, you know, we're still grinding out videos and I'm like, shit, you know, there's a few time, there's a few moments in the series where I'm like, ah, I don't want to have to rely on like filler stuff. So I was like, you know, I, I could use ideas. I was always open to ideas. So for him to say he didn't give out ideas because it was my baby, which it was, but he would know that I'd always be looking to Uncle Larry for ideas, be looking to my dad and my mom for ideas. And he only gave like one or two ideas over the whole, what was it, maybe eight months that he worked. And it, it just sucked. It really sucked. And I, I really wish he, he gave more. So January came, February, we're doing the uh, Haunted series, which is a lot of fun. But me and Uncle Larry pretty much were heading that and coming up with all the cool little hauntings and things. And for, for some of the Haunted series, I was filming predominantly all that too. One of the benefits he, he, he neglects to acknowledge is the fact that I paid for dinner almost every night um, in the Haunted series. Like we get Applebee's all the fucking time because, you know, um, we are doing two videos and, and we had like a 15 minute drive. But um, I was paying for dinners and that was part of it. If we ever had a shoot day that went longer than expected, you know, I would always be buying meals. And, and there's a benefit in that. There's also the benefit where, where 2015, you know, I, I paid for all expenses paid trip to LA and to VidCon. We had a great time with that. Uh, we also had a great night. We went to New York City, and, and that was a fun experience. Um, so we're getting through the Aunt Jackie Haunted series, and then uh, March came time, and it was time for the odd jobs. But there got to be kind of like this breaking point in the beginning of March uh, where I was going to go to Nashville with Juliet to uh, produce the song for the finale called Battle Cry. It was, you know, 100%. A business trip we're going produce this thing you know make some vlogs uh, in the process because I got to get the videos out to you guys and for whatever reason corn did not want to take me I get he thought he was being used um, but I told him I was like dude I was like uh, this I'm going on a five-day business trip you're about to get five days off paid vacation where I'm doing everything you know I'm pro I'm produced I'm helping produce this song funding the production of this song and I'll be gone for five days. I'm doing all the videos. You, you get paid just to, to sit on your ass and do nothing. And he had a problem with driving 40 minutes to the airport. And he didn't even, I didn't even think he worked that day. I was like, dude, all you have to do is drive me to the airport. And I wanted to document the travel to show that as being a reality. But, you know, Jesse, at that point in the series, he, his character couldn't have his dad taking him. I couldn't have my mom taking me. He, he started giving me shit in text. And I, and I would never, like, post text messages or anything on here. But then he, he's giving me a serious attitude. And I... He finally agrees, and, and he and I get in the car, and the dude's just silent, and I'm like, dude, what's wrong? So, you know, I, I like things to be open, and in a partnership, in a business agreement, or even as best friends, you communicate and say what's going on, how you're feeling, and I would always encourage that. Look at the 40 minute drive, dude didn't say a fucking word. His hands on the steering wheel, like he's gonna rip the steering wheel off. Didn't say a word. I'm like, what's going on, man? I was like, I noticed an attitude change. Like, what's up? Didn't say a word, and I was like, look, man, I I I don't know what's going on with you. You, you have me worried. I'm about to be gone for five days. You're my best friend. You, you know, you've been with me through this journey. I was like, you know, why are you acting this way? Why can't you open up to me? And, and I gave him a hug. I was like, dude, thank you for everything. I was like, 
please like text me while I'm on the trip. I, I need to know. And then he did it. He didn't give a shit. Um, it wasn't until I came back where he said he wanted to raise. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, bro. I was like, I didn't know you fucking wanted a raise. Like, I, I was actually thinking about giving you a raise because we're, we're at this point in the series where, where we're getting close to the why. We're getting to the end here. I thought he had been doing a good job. I was gonna, I was gonna boost him up. So he was get, getting paid three grand a month. I told him, I was like, look, I said, you gotta be able to talk to me about these kind of things. Because I, I thought it was something a lot worse. Like, I thought he just fucking hated my guts or something to sort of resent me for whatever reason. And I told him, I was like, you know what, dude? And he didn't say this in his video. I cut him a check. I told him I, I'd pay you for, the, for this upcoming month, $7,500. <laughs> That's double his pay plus a little extra because I valued, I valued him. And uh, apparently it, it just, it, it wasn't enough. He, he, he almost like stifled his reaction. You know, normally you tell any rational human being that amount and they'd be like, yeah, dude, thank you. Dude, that would be awesome. Like, yes. But he was just like, oh, I'll only talk to my parents. And I was like, what? I was like, what? And it was like weird shit like that. And um, so then we got into the farming series. Hours became even less. It became like not even six hours. It was like four hour days. Like there was a couple weeks. And I took notes on corn all the time, you know, to track my employees' performance because I am running a business and it's not just corn getting paid. You know, I, I paid Uncle Chris, I paid Anita and Nancy and, um, uh, You'll get more into that in depth in the documentary uh, that Brian's completing, and, and it's great that we can talk freely about that. But um, I also paid for an RV, a pool, multiple vehicles, consoles for giveaways and destruction, building a room. You know, I, 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 there's a lot of business expenses. Uh, you know, production of Battle Cry, which was a lot. You know, graphic design, that was a lot. Um, and for me to pay him 7500 I thought that, and I don't know why he's bringing my agent into this, it doesn't even fucking, it's not even relevant. But yeah, I told him I'd pay him 7500 So that, so the, so the next month comes, and, uh, oh, and I also forgot he got brand deals. He got like $500 for Anki Overdrive deal, and he got uh, like $800 for an Audible deal. Um, so he, he's getting, he's getting money from everywhere, and, uh... <sighs> Month, the month goes by the farming series and uh, we get we get to the tail end of it ended up working like four hour days like there was like a week or so where he pulled maybe 28 hour weeks and this was that month that happened to fall on where he was getting paid seven thousand five hundred dollars which mind you guys that kind of monthly salary <laughs> that's more than both my parents make monthly combined and corn was getting it just to hold the camera so I I, you know, there's only so much I can do to, to please the guy. And um, so it got time to the end of the month. I wrote him the check and I handed it to him. Check for $7,500. And he was sitting on my bed. I can remember he was sitting right there. Really smug look on his face. And I handed him the check. And that was it. No thank you. He didn't say thank you. He, he didn't smile. He, it was like, it was just like, he took it. And I was like talking about like what we needed to do the next day and, and whatever. And, and, and I always remembered that. He didn't even fucking say thank you. Like he took every single thing for granted. And the irony is, is that he thinks he was taken for granted. But you get fucking $7,500 for uh, 28 hour weeks just holding a camera doing as you're told. And, and you're coming unmotivated and you know you, you hardly say a word and you're on your phone a lot of the time. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a pretty good fucking gig. Um, so after a week went by, I thought also paying him that much more, I would see a change. I'd see a change in behavior. I'd see an attitude coming each day with like, I got some great ideas, Jesse, or um, yeah, that's a funny idea, Jess. Like, I'd you know, let me hold the camera. Like, like, he, he, like he'd actually be motivated and everything, but it didn't happen. So after a week went by and it seemed like his attitude was even worse, um, where I was like, look, dude, and, and it's really, you know, it, it, su it sucked for me to have to do this. And I was like, look, I was like, I can't afford to pay you this much, man. You know, it was 28 eight hour weeks and as a businessman, it's like, you know, I, I, I can't, I, it just doesn't make sense. I'm losing money, you know, in terms of like effort versus how much you're paid, it, it's not there. And I told him, I was like, anyone could hold the camera and, and I wasn't saying that to be rude but it's a fact like to hopefully ha uh, have him understand that don't, don't take this for granted like you know I could have had I could have hired Tom I, I could have hired somebody who has graduated with a film degree and has, has done uh, 
you know, uh, photojournalism or, you know, has, has done uh, videography before. Um, but I was like, dude, like, I, I, I need you to appreciate, it was just very difficult to communicate with him. So I, I felt pretty bad and I, and I, I, I ended up deciding, you know what, dude, I'll, I'll pay you 3500 for the following month. And at this point, we only had like two months left of the series, so it was also uh, a very different time as well. But it's like, dude, I'll pay you 3500 We also got a brand deal coming up. Um, for, for That was the Audible deal in which you get an extra $8,800. Um, so I thought that was good, and he just, he seemed pretty upset. So then after a, a week after that, uh, I think we're maybe around like Wingless Eagle phase. Yeah, and, and he says, I can't keep doing this, I need a raise. And it was like, it was like he didn't even listen to what just happened. It's like he got paid that 75, and it was like, oh, if I can get paid 7500 I want to keep getting paid that. Like, I like this. Like, let me keep milking him for money. Like, Jesse's a nice guy. Let me take advantage of that. So it got to this point where he's asking for more money. And guys, I don't know, you know, a lot of you guys are younger or whatever, but you don't ask your boss for a raise. And you also don't go against a contract that states you're getting paid three grand for a year set. And I gave him 7,500 for a month, and then 3,500. I was very agreeable, and, 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 I, and I, I gave him the opportunity to get to a point where he could earn more if he if he brought the attitude and he brought the motivation and the energy and the passion. But he just didn't. And when I when I when I said that, like like he he worked for six months and he's expecting a, a raise after we just had a mature conversation about why I can't afford to do it, and I was still giving him more than I thought he was worth, and it got really edgy and I was like and that's why you know he says I laugh because I was like I was like what I was like dude like we we, we just talked about this like I, I love you to death man but I can't afford to pay you like it, it, you remember you're you're working for rigid studios and and we need rigid studios to succeed the rigid studios budget's getting stretched a mile because no fucking YouTube channel buys RVs and fucking pools to smash and makes no money back so I'm like look dude like there's a lot more at stake and like he didn't see big picture and he just wanted more and more and it, it got to be very frustrating so I told him I was like look man your character technically gets written off in the series so and that's in, in a few weeks hang on till then and, and he asked well I can't get paid more I like time off um, and I told him I was like you will have time off like you'll be written off you'll have maybe four or five days technically paid um, and then we got so we got the finale like we're coming up in the finale and we're coming up on VidCon, and uh, so so that's where we're at. And then then he has the shittiest attitude going forward, where he's just not even doing stuff. And and I forgot to mention that yeah he he did. There was a time where he moved fan mail uh, for when we had to do the incineration. He had to move it into the cubby. That was like one night, and maybe took like two hours or whatever. And I was with him. I couldn't move the boxes. I physically couldn't. Trust me, if I physically could, I would have do everything because that's just how I am. I fucking do everything. And, you know, he moved my laundry bin maybe, what, all of three times? It acts like it was like, oh, oh, like it was like working so fucking hard, but like some people like make minimum wage and bust their ass. And it's like he complains about moving a laundry bin down the stairs three times it takes maybe 15 seconds to do or moving a, a heavy fan mail box that takes maybe you know an hour to move all the boxes and then that's it so it was just like very privileged and you know i don't want to be name calling or saying anything out of place but like he did call me a dick and insinuated that i was manipulative and whatever and, and he he's saying these things but like i do feel that at times he, he was getting very entitled um and, and it's sad. It's sad that it got to that point. It's very petty. It was pitiful. And it's a shame that it couldn't be appreciated, um, the opportunity that we were both given. And that's why I work every fucking day so hard because I love you guys. And I love I love that this is a thing, that, that I'm able to do this. And like, I don't think he, because he didn't have all the struggle, he didn't really appreciate it as, as much. Um, I don't know. All right, so we're getting to the, uh, towards the end of the series. Um, He's got that really shitty attitude, and then it comes time to do Psycho Uncle Impact's pool. This is a big video, you know, taking down a pool that's like thousands, thousands, and thousands of dollars, you know, close to 10 grand. Um, that's to replace the, the, out, the above ground, but we ended up getting in ground, which was fucking like 30 grand. And um, we, we go to destroy it, and I, I'm shooting BTS, which you guys will see that uh, at some point once the dock is out. And he. Um, He's filming BTS and he's got one hand in his pocket. 
And it's the first thing he's got to film today. We're only shooting for like maybe two or three hours this day. And, and he's got his hand in his pocket and he's, he's doing a one hand thing. Like he doesn't give a shit. Like he could have a fucking beer in one hand, which he had, you know, drank on while well, on during a filming day before. And, and I just asked him, and, I, and you'll see the behind the scenes eventually, so I'm not making this shit up. You know, you can believe Corey or whatever because he spoke first, but like, I'm spitting it out through, guys. Uh, I was like, Corey, I was like, could you put two hands on the camera, please? I was like, you know, this is, this is your job. And he literally, it comes back. The middle finger comes back, and he flips me off. Flips his boss off, also his best friend, and it was like pretty serious. And I was like, really? I was like, you just flipped me off? And, and what Corn doesn't know is I wanted to fire him like a bunch of different times because I never felt so, un, un, I felt unappreciated. I felt disrespected whenever he on his fucking phone. I felt there's a lot of people that could do his job better and and that that we're, we're just better all around, even creatively. Um, so I wanted to fire him, but I knew, I was like, fuck, you know, this is, he, he's locked in. We can't have a change now. So, so that had me flip me off and I was like, oh my God, I you know, as horrible as it sounds, I want to punch him in the dick. <laughs> I just said dick because it's funnier, but I'm not a pussy like that. I would punch him in his face, but um, I was like, what the hell? Like, you know, who who does that? Just flips him off like that and just filming a video. And um, we shot it. Everything's cool. Flash forward a couple weeks. Uh, so Corn gets written off. You know, he gets he gets yelled at by my dad. You know, that was always going to happen in the story. You know, I lost like 10,000 10, subs, which, which fucking blows because people, you know, thought it was real. And that that is what it is. But, um... It sucks. Uh, corn was off for like many days towards the end where I was just shooting videos in the small room downstairs, losing my mind. Uh, you'll see in the behind the scenes how I shot those all and and how difficult it was for me. And I did those all myself and, and that's totally fine. So he had a lot of days off. At this point, I think he's got this new girlfriend in the picture that's like living with him. And uh, I, so I know, you know, Corn is for his girls. It's not really my place to say, but like this was a big deal to him. The fact that he had a girlfriend, and I, and I was happy. You know, I'm, I'm really glad that he found somebody that he really cared about and that he loved. But not gonna lie, he was like hosed before bros. Like he didn't give a shit anymore about his job, the series, me. It was all this, all this girl, and I understood that because like I think we all know with the first love, it's like this is everything to me. Um, so you know, he had a few days off. I asked him, I was like, could you come over and help me write some, uh, I'm a psychopath on the on the board, and he, and he got some markers for me, and he did that, and, um, and then it came time. Once again, one of the benefits he's neglecting, and, and I think he talked about it, he wasn't really excited to, for Switzerland, uh, he, he could have told me that, he could have told me that more and been open about communication, but once again, he wasn't very good at that. So... All expenses paid trip to Switzerland, we're talking thousands of dollars, um, one of the benefits, neglected. Um, so... I hadn't seen him for a day or two. He had a few days off before the marker situation, and all paid, and, and he comes over, and we're having a family discussion, not only about Psycho Kid Flea's country, but as a trip as a whole, because we're going international. You know, we have to not only, we have to take a flight out to Switzerland, and then take all these trains, and it's a little confusing, and, and the hardest part about Psycho Kid Flea's country, we're shooting it all on the go. There's no room for errors. Like, we gotta hit these shots. I had this whole shot list made up, and I was going over that with him, outside on the patio and I was like corn pay attention I was like look this is what you need to bring up Larry you need to pack the noose on the plane you're gonna be that guy or I was like dad you need to bring the tripod or this this you need to bring you know whatever and the whole time corn's on his fucking phone he's texting the girl that he just left like he couldn't even give me one or two hours as part of his job to talk about the culmination of the finale and guys interestingly enough also was me Jeffrey and my dad shot me shooting my father you know, part, the one of the the culmination of the fucking series, and we shot that the day before. So corn comes, and we're talking about the so we could flee's country. He didn't once. He didn't fucking once ask, "How did the shoot go? How did you killing your father?" You know, the only thing we've been working towards for the last year or so. You know, how did that go? Because I care. I care at least a little bit to ask. Even if I didn't care, at least I care enough to ask. He didn't give a shit. He did not give a fuck. I killed my dad. We all did that. He didn't give a shit. He didn't even give a shit for about anything besides the girl at that point. Which fucking sucks. Didn't even ask. And that hurt a lot. You know, he was with me throughout the whole journey. Didn't even give a shit about the characters, the story, anything. Anything that we were working towards. He just wanted to get back to the girl. And he wanted to get paid a lot more money. Greedy. And uh, so he gives me attitude. He's looking at me like he's got this face on like, 
totally just bullshitting me like he cares ab about the uh, so you could fleece country and about the Switzerland trip and you know two hours gone by and and I feel like every everything is squared away I have everything said for the for the finale so we're ready to go in two days when we leave and uh, Corin leaves in a hurry he just like he shakes his head and then and then walks off and then Uncle Larry happened to be walking off at the time while Corin was and he's like fucking darting to his car just to go home to the girl and he says under his breath what a fucking waste of time. What a fucking waste of time. He said that after we're talking about all expense paid trip to Switzerland, the ending of the series, and he says, what a fucking waste of time. It was two hours after having like four or five days off just because you can't, what, see the girl? I, very frustrating. So after, Uncle Larry told me that. I mean, Uncle Larry, you know, was actually kind enough to not call him out there. He, he could have. Um, and, you know, you ask anyone, throughout the series, they all say the same shit. Like, Corn's very quiet, he was on his phone, they'd all say the same thing, and, and I've, I've expressed my feelings towards a lot of family members and stuff, and you may think like, oh, it's just because Jesse's family and stuff, but it's like, no, like there was a, a people, like Anita and Nancy weren't family, uh, Strawberries aren't family, and it's like, they, they saw it too, where it's just like, he didn't give a shit. Um, and it's a hard person to get close to. So, um, so that happened. I got it. I started to panic a little bit because I was like, Jesus. I was like, Corn. I don't. I feel like he's not going to be capable to film the finale. So I called him the day before we leave, and I said, Hey, man. I was like, You excited? Because I was pretty excited. Like Switzerland sounds awesome. I was excited for this thing to be over, and I knew this the ending would be beautiful, and I was excited for people to see that. And I was like, You excited? And he's just like, For what? And I just wanted to slap him. I just wanted to sla do a, a virtual slap through the phone, and I was like. I was like, dude, we're going to Switzerland. Everything we work towards, it's finally ending. Um, and then we can be free and do whatever kind of content we want. And it's going to be a lot more laid back. And and he's just like, yeah, I'm not even packed yet. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, dude, I just wanted to say um, thank you for everything. And, and dude, I want to incentivize this finale for you. Um, I want to give you a big bonus if, if if we can pull this off. And he was like, oh, cool. I don't know if that was a real response or not. He's like, okay, cool. And I was like, sweet man. I was like, come here at this time. And then we're off. We're going to Philly. Off to Switzerland. It's a long flight. There for a week in the mountains. It's beautiful. Shoot the finale. And he's like, all right, bye. So I was like feeling pretty good. I was like, okay, sweet. He's, he's, he's good for the finale, you know. Um, and then wouldn't you know it? All ready to go. An hour before we're supposed to leave for Switzerland, he sends me a text message. And if that just doesn't say he's a coward, I don't know what does. It's a fucking text message. And it's, it's not even as lengthy as it could have been where he has the nerve to say, not only does he not get paid enough, but he brings my parents into it, which I'm not gonna say what it is he compared it to or what he said, but he brought my parents into it, which I thought was really inappropriate and unnecessary and immature. And then he, he, he talks and he talks about um, just getting a raise and it was like money this, money that. After I just said, I'd give him a bonus for the finale. And, and, and not only that, he's all expense paid trip to Switzerland. And then after that, two weeks off. Two full weeks off because we had 16 one minute videos that were going to be prepared to come out during that time. So two weeks off, all expenses paid trip to Switzerland on top of getting paid for that month. And then an all expenses paid trip to Los Angeles and VidCon tickets and the time of his life. And he says uh, he's not satisfied. It's not enough for him. So he sent me that text and Jesse trying to be the bigger man. I said, I, I understand. We'll talk when we get back. But really, you know, I'm fuming inside. I have very good self-control and, and uh, self-restraint, um, which I hate that I have to do this video right now because if it were up to me, I would have ignored it. But unfortunately, people would have thought I was uh, running away from it, which isn't the case. Um, but yeah, he did that. And I was like, fuck. I was like, fuck, he screwed me. And I and I saw in his video, he thought I was gonna come and, and, and what, like offer him more money? Like it was almost like blackmail away, where it's like, I'm not gonna do this finale until it was like he was having a mini strike right at the fucking finale, because he wasn't getting paid enough, which is ridiculous, I think, as you can tell now. And uh, I was like, fuck. I was like, he really fucked us over. An hour before we supposed to leave, we're supposed to leave for Switzerland. And not only that, guys, I can't refund that ticket. I can't refund that Los Angeles ticket. I lost a few thousand dollars because he quit 
Not to mention he breached a two-year contract, which completely, you know, fucked himself and fucked me over. After, you know, wanting job security, he ends up only working for eight months and quitting after getting paid a decent amount and getting a YouTube channel, which he's still posting on. And it, it's just, it's very frustrating. Um, so that happened, and luckily, Jeffrey, awesomest fucking brother I could ever ask for, he fucking killed it. He uh, he stepped up to the plate and was like, "Dude, I feel for you, man. I'll 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 hold the camera for you. Whatever you need me to do." And me and Jeffrey killed it. The finale was beautiful, and it just goes to show that you know he can be replaced. Jeffrey fucking killed it, man. He killed it. And I told him I was like, "Jeffrey, thank you so much. I gave him my Canon 70D. Yeah, I gave him a thousand dollars just to thank you because it was like it meant a lot." And it was super clutch. So, you know, Switzerland was a thing, and we were all very hurt. It was like a... It was a giant fuck you to me. And it was a fuck you to my whole family. Because we welcomed him in. You know, we all were part of this production. And to quit the last fucking second, and as a fuck you, like more middle fingers all around. That's why. And, and you see how glare on Twitter, guys, like, you, under, you gotta understand, like, there's a lot we haven't talked about. And it's just, it's frustrating. His um, perceptions and things, and it's just you guys don't know. Um, so Switzerland goes by, um, and I come back. And if he did it, if he wasn't surefire about quitting, like I said, I've had thoughts about firing him. So like when I talked, like, when he came in, I was very respectful. I was like, "Is this? Are you sure this is what you want?" He's like, "Yes, I want to quit. I'm not getting paid." I was like, "I respect that." And you know, I cut him the checks he deserved uh, or that, that he needed to f for his final months. And then I also, you know, wrote him a check for $6,000, which once again, this was something that I helped him with some investments that he would have never otherwise knew or understood. So I made him another six grand just, you know, because, because I'm a nice guy and, and uh, I wanted to get him in on something. But uh, it's whatever, you know. Um, so so uh, I, I hug him. I'm like, thank you for your work, dude. I was like, it, it, you know, it's a shame, but I, respect. I was like, what are you doing now? He said, I'm going to be a cop. But then I also asked him, I was like, you going to be doing YouTube videos? And he said, yes. I don't know about you, but I don't think he's being a cop right now. It looks like he's just using his YouTube channel, which kind of sucks because it's there because of, of what we did together. And it's kind of like, a once again, like, sorry, Jess, fuck you. you know? um, but yeah, I asked him, I was like, did you watch the finale? Did you watch Psycho Kid Flee's Country? He's like, nah. Didn't even watch the finale. Didn't even watch the thing that he was supposed to do with me. And uh, it sucked. It really sucked to hear that. He didn't even watch the finale. He didn't even care enough. Even, and, and maybe he lied. And maybe he lied just to say that. I don't know. He didn't even watch it. He didn't watch it. It's just fucking it's so frustrating. Very frustrating. Um, the one person who was like getting paid to do it. And he, and he just didn't even give a shit. So after that, um, skip some time ahead. And, uh, you know, Brian's in town trying to get an interview. He didn't want to do it. Um, I had asked him if he wanted to. He didn't want to do it. Um, and I, and I, and I, and I reached out to him not too long ago where, you know, cause I, I, I've had some shit happen to me with friends. You know, I, I had my, my best friend at one point, uh, you know, cheat, cheat, uh, have fuck, he fucked my girlfriend in my very own bed. And you know what? We ended up, uh, uh, I forgave him for that at a certain point because like I never I'm the type of person that never wants somebody upset with them or, or mad at them. You know, I, I like to, uh, make people happy and entertain them and, and be friendly. So like, I reached out to Corn and I was like, look, dude. I was like, I know I was passionate. I know it was assertive. And uh, I never said anything like negative to him or, you know, and I, and I just said some nice things to him. And, you know, would, I would never, I would hate to see a friendship go to waste over what seems like petty shit. And he just, silent treatment. You know, his response didn't, like, he didn't even care. Um, you know, he had the girl the whole summer, so I'm sure, you know, he, it was, like, all or nothing, so he didn't give a shit about anything else. And and then, you know, four months later, after it happens, he makes a video, uh, you know, call me a dick and, and manipulative and not giving the full truth, and it sucks. You know, I, I can easily say, like, yeah, um... I got really serious. I got really passionate when it came to telling my story, but you know, there's things to get done, but I, it never crossed a line. And um, you know, you could ask anyone and it's different. He's the only one that defected. I mean, the only other one was Jeffrey's ex, but you know, she was, you know, bash it cray, but that's another story for another time. Uh, 
But uh, yeah, he didn't even fucking respond to it. And then next thing you know, he comes out with a video. And he says it was because people have been asking him. But that's not true. Because people have been asking him since day one why he quit. And I just gave him the benefit of the doubt. I was like, he'll talk about it if he wants to. But until then, I'm just going to say you want to be a cop. Because the, the full truth, people might not uh, like that. It's just hard for me, I think, as a creative person and a, and a driven person. And um, why... Why he would be so upset, you know, you're filming with your best friend, you're getting paid a lot of money, you're getting a lot of fame too in the process, you have your own channel, your own Twitch, you're getting to travel all over, you know, go to Switzerland, all paid for, you're getting meals paid for, um, and at times he, he was talking about like, oh, health benefits or, or, or comparing benefits, and he acted like that was a big deal, but it sounded like he was just echoing his parents, because realistically, he's going to be on his parents' health insurance plan for the next two years or so, so it's not even like overlapping our contract, and it was something that he knew going into it, he wasn't going to get those things, so he's trying to manipulate the situation and, and trying to get more uh, gain, and um, it's like you're, you're filming with your best friend, holding the camera, getting to sleep in every day. There's so many cool things that I feel like anybody would jump on this opportunity in a heartbeat. So for him to take that for granted, it just doesn't make sense to me. And maybe it doesn't make sense to a lot of you guys, which is why you're probably like, I, yeah, I don't get it either. What the fuck? Uh, somebody must be lying or something. But it's like, w why? Why? And I'm sure a lot of you guys would love to, to work with me or um, be a part of a series. And I do want to open it up to the fans. I mean, I've opened it up to the fans in the past. Uh, and, I, and I really want to hold auditions for this thing. And... Um, I, I want people who are passionate. I think ultimately that is is the ticket here. Is he, he just wasn't in his heart wasn't in it. His heart wasn't in it, and it, it, it became only about the money uh, because you know there was nothing else keeping him tied to it. And it was his friend, and he and I don't I don't know I don't know. And that's where we're at now. I didn't want to do this video because he might do a video back, and then it just becomes his flame war, and then he gets attention in his channel, and it's just it's just stupid. It's immature. I hate that this is happening, but that's the story with Corn. And ultimately, you know, you guys, I wanted to tell my story because I hate for, for somebody to, to speak on my behalf. And hopefully you can find some truth in all this. And um, yeah, guys, like, like ultimately, his just heart wasn't in it. He, he wanted more money and he just wasn't a creative person. And in this line of work, you know, there's a lot of people that would jump on an opportunity like this to work on the Psycho Series or to work on the series we have coming up in the future. And uh, he was missing a lot of marks, and, and uh, I, I, I don't know, there's a lot of things I can't put a finger on. because He was a very quiet person, unmotivated, and it was hard to get inside his head, and he just didn't communicate that effectively. Um, ultimately, you know, it, it, was a biz, it was a business, and, and it was a partnership, and they say you shouldn't get into business with friends, and, and it's a shame. It's a shame to see the friendship deteriorate like that, but, but you know what? You know, Ridges Studios is going to continue all onward. You know, he, he's got his life, and, and truly, I hope he's happy, and I hope you're content, man, if you watch this video, you know, um, no hard feelings. It, it, it is what it is. I've had a lot of time to reflect on it, and it's just like, that, that has become part of this, this history now, and uh, best of luck to you, man, whatever you do, and um, I, I'm very happy, you know, Ridge Studios ain't stopping, guys. Uh, I'm very happy with Parker. Parker's like everything I want. He, he's very dynamic personality. He, he's picking up the camera very well. Um, he, he's been a very, very good friend and has contributed creative ideas. So I'm, I'm very happy uh, that we have Parker now. I'm excited for the future. You know, I love you guys so much. Uh, thanks for listening to this because, you know, uh, you definitely probably take whatever I say with a grain of salt. But this is real me and this is the real truth. That's what happened. And you'll see it in the behind the scenes and you'll hear about it in the documentary. And um, that's it, guys. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. Twitter, Instagram, links in the description. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Um, no hate at all. Um, you know, I guess everything happens for a reason, and uh, that's that. Uh, we'll have some behind the scenes coming out tomorrow. We'll have a new series announcement, which, yeah, guys, I'm gonna let you know ahead of time what's going on, and, and I'm excited. Love you, Jersey Death, and don't forget to keep it rigid.